Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to pick a blockchain when you're trying to build your first blockchain application and you're trying to figure out where to start. I'm gonna talk about you know how to pick the blockchain, which one's best for you. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below. And also, my online blockchain developer bootcamp is coming out on May 15th, 2019, which is the best way for you to learn to become a highly paid blockchain developer. So you can find more about that with a link down below. Go to dappuniversity.com forward slash free download to sign up for my email list. You're going to get all kinds of notifications about the bootcamp as it's coming out. And if you're watching this video after the bootcamp started released, I'm sure you can find a link down below that will talk about you know how to get started with the bootcamp so that you can become a highly paid blockchain developer. So how do you pick a blockchain? Which one's best for you? And like, what are the questions you need to ask in order to pick one for your project? So I'm going to talk about the questions you need to answer that will lead you to the best solution. Okay. The top four questions that you need to ask yourself are, you know, what are you trying to build? You know, what does it need to do? What languages and technologies do you already know? Are there good resources for building with the technology? And are there actually end users, you know, using the technology already? So I'm going to talk about all four of these different questions that you need to ask yourself. So I'll talk about this first, you know, from other programming backgrounds, like how these questions apply. So you'll have an analogy to understand, you know, how to you know, apply this to the blockchain. You know, if you're trying to pick a, a framework to build a web application or to build a mobile app or to build a, anything really, you know, there's a lot, these are the kinds of questions you have to ask yourself. You know, for example, if you wanted to build, you know, a website and you want to have, you know, rich client side interactions and all that kind of stuff, like, well, the language is pretty obvious. You want to use JavaScript most likely, right? But, you know, within the JavaScript ecosystem, there's lots of different front-end frameworks um, to build client-side applications, right? There's lots of different, you know, things you have to think about when, you know, building complex, you know, user interfaces. There's lots of frameworks like Angular, like React. There's lots, lots of others, right? And there's reasons why you might pick one or the other, right? That kind of falls down into, um, you know, what you already know, uh, have you used these frameworks before? Is there good documentation and developer support for these kinds of things? There's, the list kind of goes on, right? So, but if you're going to build a backend for your, you know, website or an API or something like that, there's lots of different options you can do. You know, you could use, uh, you know, Node.js, you could use Express, you could use, um, you know, Django, you could use Ruby on Rails, lots of different things. But you might need to ask, like, what does your API need to do? Does it need to have real-time, you know, features? Does it need to be able to push... Uh, and work with WebSockets and things like that, right? So there's lots of different questions you would, uh, you know, ask about the requirements of your app, right? What does it need to do? What do you already know? Like, what technology do you already know? If you knew Ruby already, you would pick Ruby on Rails because that would be an obvious choice for you unless you, you know, needed some other types of things that it doesn't do, right? And also, you know, a lot of these things are going to have, you know, rich uh, developer support in the ecosystem and things like that already. So they're kind of all equal in that category. So you wouldn't have to worry about that as much, right? And, you know, people are using the internet already. So I don't think you have to worry too much about, you know, are there users uh, who would use, you know, web applications and APIs and stuff like that. So how would you apply this to a blockchain? Like when you're trying to pick a blockchain for your project, right? So you would ask the same kinds of questions, right? What does your app need to do? Is there a blockchain that's perfectly suited for your application use case? And if there is, then that's the blockchain that you want to use. There's all kinds of considerations you might have, you know, like uh, transactions per second, things like that, right? There's all kinds of criteria that you need to know about your project um, to know which blockchain is right for you. And you, know, you can weigh and critique each blockchain based upon, you know, these individual factors. And you'll want to hold some of these factors in tension with others, right? Like, so if a blockchain has claims to have a bazillion transactions per second, but has no users, then maybe it's not the best choice for your project, right? So you'll see these kinds of things happen a lot where people will kind of say that something's capable of something it's maybe not quite capable of, um, or it, you know, is capable maybe of that, but it sacrifices something else. Maybe it sacrifices security, it sacrifices, you know, some other thing to achieve a different outcome. And so those are definitely things that you want to consider um, when you're thinking like, is this the right blockchain for me? Now the question is, you know, what do you know? What technology do you know already? Like programming languages, you know, are there libraries that interact with this blockchain written in languages you already know? So for example, like with Ethereum, you know, the Web3 clients are written in 
uh, you know, a lot of them are written in like JavaScript or Python. So if you knew either of those two languages, those would be great choices for you to interact with that blockchain, right? Or, you know, the smart contract programming language is written in Solidity, and that's a little different. You do have to learn Solidity in order to write the smart contracts, but do you know the languages that, you know, Solidity is based off of? And have you written JavaScript before? Have you, you know, looked at other C-like languages? You know, it's going to make learning that new language a lot easier. That's another way you can kind of weigh you know, your past experience on whether it's, you know, a good fit for you to transition from what you already know into this new technology, right? And another thing to think about is, you know, the developer resources. And that kind of breaks down into a couple of different things, like the user libraries, uh, you know, the frameworks, all the tech that's used to build the blockchain applications, to interact with the blockchain, anything you need to use as a developer that's built by other developers. Like, how strong are those tools? How rich is that ecosystem? And I'll be honest, you know, we're in the early phases of this stuff, and, you know, it, sometimes uh, the tooling can be a little challenging at this point. And that's not a criticism of anyone. This is a really hard, uh, you know, stage to be in. We're early adopters. We're trying to build new things as a new technology. Um, that's just kind of the reality. But definitely some things have almost no tools to build what you're looking for. And some things have, you know, a lot more advanced tools. Some blockchains do, right? So that's what you're going to want to think about. Like if you go pick a blockchain and there's like, no tools to build what you need, then maybe that's not the right one for you. Or, you know, another thing is just, you know, knowledge base. So if you start Googling problems with your blockchain and there's no posts on Stack Overflow or anything like that, no one's running into the same kind of errors that you are, then that might be kind of a hint that you're in a ghost town where, you know, people don't know about this technology and you might be too early, right, to use this. And it may be not the right fit for you. Another thing to think about is like educational resources. Are there ways for you to learn the technology? Is there good documentation? Are there good tutorials, right? Are there your resources like this channel to teach you about the technology you want to learn so that you don't have to sit there and just bang your head against the wall trying to figure out everything for yourself? So let's look at an example use case, right? Let's say you wanted to build a cryptocurrency exchange, right? Let's say specifically that you wanted to trade a Ethereum-based tokens, like ERC-20 tokens. Well, that choice would be pretty obvious about what you would need to choose, right? The Ethereum tokens are based on smart contracts. In order to trade them with one another or to trade them for Ether, you know, you're going to be using native uh, uh, components of the Ethereum blockchain, and you're pretty much locked into... Um, you know, using Ethereum at that point, right? It'd be an obvious use case. But let's look at, you know, some other use cases. Like if you just wanted to build an application that, you know, verified information on the blockchain. Let's like say it settled the result of sort of some transaction on the block. Well, you can do that with Ethereum also. It's a really good general purpose blockchain. You could do it with lots of other blockchains too. But you'll want to run uh, sort of those other questions by yourself. Like what do you already know? Do you know JavaScript? Do you know Python? Do you know some of these other languages that make it a good fit for you to enter into that ecosystem, to work with the tools that already exist, right? If you're really good at JavaScript and you know how to build, you know, applications with JavaScript, Ethereum's a great choice. Same thing with Python, right? There's all kinds of ways um, that you can take what you know to enter into an unfamiliar territory you're going to be able to rest upon you know, some of the knowledge you already have that'll make that transition a lot easier. So let's take you know an example use case from stuff that I that I work on. So there's a reason that I use Ethereum for most of the stuff that I do, and also you know most of the content that I teach on this channel. It's a good general purpose blockchain, right? It does serves most of the use cases that I need it to do, and also most of the use cases that my clients need it to do, right? So. Also, it's got a really good developer community, right? If you look at the graphs of like developers who are coming into the ecosystem and all the things that they're building, all the tools that they're downloading, you can see that the tools are under heavy development. You know, that does come with some pain, right? Some code breaks from time to time. You have to keep upgrading things, but that's a good sign in the early phases that, you know, it's under active development and, and you were pushing this space forward to make it a better experience for developers overall in the long run, right? And if you Google problems, uh, you know, out of Ethereum, you're going to see lots of results on stuff like Stack Overflow. Um, you know, I put out a lot of educational content related to Ethereum and building, you know, blockchain technology. And, you know, you can find my posts on the internet. You can find my videos. And I really try to contribute back to the space to make it a better community to help, you know, push this space forward. And, you know, Ethereum also, it jives with a lot of things that I already understand, right? I already understand JavaScript pretty well. I already understand a lot of the technologies that we use to build Ethereum projects. And, you know, it 
a lot of other people do. It's a very common language and it's, you know, something that it's easy for me to communicate with other developers and I can usually suspect that I can at least follow along with, you know, some of the kinds of things that are there because even Solidity is pretty easy to understand if you just look at it and have a familiarity with, you know, other programming languages. So that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you all like this video. Hope that helps you pick a blockchain and find one that's best for you and your project. So again, be sure to click the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And stay tuned for my blockchain developer bootcamp that's coming out on May 15th, 2019. It's gonna be the best way for you to become a highly paid blockchain developer. And you're gonna wanna jump on my email list to find out more about that uh, as it comes out. If you're watching this video after May 15th, I'm sure you can find a link down below that'll give you more information about how to join the bootcamp. So until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.